All right, y'all, welcome back to another video. It's Black Balloon, and y'all already know what's going on, man. So look, today we're gonna look back and we're gonna revisit the topic about Aaron Hernandez, right? Now, this is not in light of anything new, you know? There's no new news that came out about it, but there was a clip that I never saw. You know, sometimes, you know, we don't see everything. Sometimes things just escape me and it was a clip of a couple of former NFL guys talking about what they believe or, you know, them not believing in the fact that Aaron Hernandez was not suicidal and he did not kill himself. Now, the clip comes from people who played with Aaron Hernandez, who were close friends with him. Some of y'all might have saw this clip. Some of y'all may have not saw it. So in this video, we're basically just going to revisit the topic and... You know, we'll kind of do a revamp video of Aaron Hernandez because the first time I did it, I was very new to YouTube. I just talked about it and I gave my thoughts on it. Never really did, a, uh, you know, a real kind of deep dive into Aaron Hernandez. Right. But there's a lot here. There's a lot that goes to his death. You know, a lot of numerology, a lot of signs that point to it being, you know, way more of a ritual than anything else. I don't think there's much at all that points to it being you know, straight up on how they give us, you know, the, the way that he killed himself. Nothing to me points to the narrative. And we're going to go over that narrative. And um, like I said, just use this video to go back down that rabbit hole. So with that being said, I think we'll jump into the official narrative first. Then I'll play the clip that I, I recently saw. And um, it just kind of blew my mind to hear these guys say the same thing that a lot of us thought about his death as well. Two of them are super famous, you know, out of the NFL. So it's just crazy to see them say the same things. And, it, you know, it just confirms a lot of the stuff that we talk about here on, cha on this channel and here on YouTube. We're not just talking out the side of our neck. All right. So let's get into the official narrative. Former NFL star and convicted murderer Aaron Hernandez is dead after an apparent suicide. Taking his life less than a week after he was acquitted in a second double murder case. Now jailers making that discovery just after 3 o'clock this morning, leaving many with more questions than answers. Less than a week after an emotional celebration as he was cleared of double murder charges, former New England Patriot Aaron Hernandez was found dead this morning inside his jail cell, the result of an apparent suicide. My understanding is Mr. Hernandez was in a solitary confinement, uh, probably for his protection. Behind bars since 2013 when he was arrested and eventually convicted in the shooting death of his friend and semi-pro football player Odin Lloyd. Prison staff say Hernandez tried to block his cell from the inside before hanging himself with a bed sheet. Within a jail cell, it's even a little more shocking because you'd think that there would be people paying attention, watching what's happening. His family and legal team say they're shocked and surprised by his death, especially as Hernandez began the appeal of his murder conviction. Attorney Jose Bays in a written statement saying Aaron was looking forward to an opportunity for a second chance to prove his innocence. Hernandez played his last game as a Patriot in 2013. All right, y'all, so as we always do, we're going to read from the official narrative of how. Now, I just want to go over this real quick before I play the clip that um, really made me want to kind of like redo, revamp this video in a proper way. So it says, former NFL star Aaron Hernandez wrote a reference to a biblical passage in ink on his forehead. It was from John 3.16 and in blood on the wall of his prison cell before he hanged himself with a bed sheet. And also, supposedly, he wrote like Illuminati and he drew um, the all eye and like an unfinished triangle, which we all know what that represents. So it says the former New England Patriots tight end was found naked April 19th at the Salza Barnowski prison, if I pronounce that right, where he was serving a life sentence in the 2013 murder of a man who had been dating his fiancee's sister. His suicide came five days after he was acquitted in the 2012 gun slayings of two men in a car. Supposedly, he had killed up, killed up to three men. He got acquitted a couple days before he actually committed suicide of the two guys that he was accused of killing in a car. Double murder trial rocked the Boston sports scene. Star Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez accused of gunning down two men outside of a nightclub after he was already charged in a separate murder case. In Boston, homicides are assigned to whoever is on duty or on call. The detectives you're about to meet caught this case just 20 minutes before they were supposed to be off the clock. June 
2013, as Aaron Hernandez is taken in for the murder of Odin Lloyd, Detective Sergeant Mark Sullivan is taken back to an unsolved double murder in the South End. I remember a uh, silver BMW sitting at the red light, a white sheet covering the bodies, crime scene tape uh, blocking both sides of the intersection. 11 months earlier, someone opened fire on a car full of friends heading home from Cure Lounge in the theater district. Sullivan remembers seeing Hernandez in security footage provided by the club. Aaron had VIP access, so he was escorted in to the right as the victims were paying. And then it just hit me that we had to look at Aaron. And you got a guy playing for the Patriots who's already being looked at in one murder, now on your radar screen. It was unbelievable. Like, like that next day when Sarge had followed him, you know, because we had video from everywhere, so follow him. The detectives travel the country, taking statements and collecting evidence. One of their first stops is the Bristol County Jail, where Hernandez is being held for the Lloyd murder. Their first face-to-face -face meeting with him is also their last. Within 10 minutes, we received a call from his lawyer. Oh, yeah. Telling us to stay good. away. We weren't even out of the parking lot yet when his lawyer called. When Aaron Hernandez refused to talk with the detectives, they turned their attention to the guy who was in the car with him that night. Enter Alexander Bradley. Alexander Bradley is not the type of guy who normally goes around speaking to law enforcement. How were you able to turn him? We had a lot of help from Aaron. Aaron tried to kill him. Alexander, what can you tell me about July 2012? Not much. That's Bradley in December 2013, the first time we tracked him down. He said I hit one in the head and one in the chest. He told the detectives Hernandez shot him in Florida six months after the double murders to silence him. While investigating the claim, they see signs that Hernandez is not only impulsive, but calculating. He has to have people drive a car for him. I mean, there's people involved in this. Alex Bradley's cell phone went missing at the strip club. So yeah. Alex had nobody to call, and Aaron left his cell phone in the hotel, and then next thing you know, now Aaron's off on a plane at 8 o'clock in the morning. Bradley IDs Hernandez as the man who killed Safira Fatardo and Daniel Diabreo in a fit of rage over a spilled drink. As of right here, that's it. The detectives reveal to us two of the survivors in the car also ID Hernandez as the trigger man, but the judge bars the prosecution from revealing that during the trial. How much do you think that hurt the prosecution's case? It couldn't have hurt us by having it. The reasoning from the court was that they were, they were too prejudicial. Another stunner from the detectives. They say Hernandez wasn't paying his own bills. Money can't buy good defense. I think it, uh, during our trial, Aaron was probably out of money and other football players were supporting his defense. The detectives would not say which players, just that they were not Patriots. You've been able to determine that? Yes. Yes. Hernandez's lead attorney, Jose Bias, suggests Diabreo and Fittardo may have been involved in something sinister when they were killed. Sullivan and McIsaac say nothing could be further from the truth. The victims were good kids. They weren't involved in anything. No association with them involved in any gang activity. They're good kids, hardworking kids. After his suicide, one of Aaron Hernandez's attorneys confirmed reports that he was gay. All right, y'all. Now, this part of the video is for anyone who is like me, and you might have a couple questions after listening to that clip about Aaron Hernandez, right? I'm going to try to sum this up as best as I can because I figured, you know, since we're going to do a deep dive into how he allegedly died, we might as well cover the murders a little bit as well. Now, I didn't want to go crazy into the whole trial and everything because that would take a very long time. And I wanted to more so focus around the ritual, you know, process of his death, right? We had to talk about this because this this whole thing is deep and the, the murder cases are kind of confusing. Remember, Hernandez got acquitted of double murder, okay? This was in 2012. He was already charged and in jail in 2013 when, you know, he got arrested for the, the murder that he actually was proved that he committed. He was in jail four years before he was acquitted of the double murder a year before he killed one of his close friends. To clarify, 2012, he was charged with killing two people outside of a bar. 2013 is when he killed his other friend that played football. He was in like a pro league. 
that was the murder he was actually charged for and serving time for. I, I even asked myself, I was like, how did he get acquitted in the 2012 murder, right? So it says, the jury found Hernandez not guilty of first degree murder in the killings of Daniel Abreu and Safiro Furtado. It convicted him of a single charge, unlawful possession of gun. The judge sentenced him to an additional four to five years. The prosecutor said, Hernandez opened fire on their car because he felt disrespected when one of the men bumped into him and spilled his drink. The defense team then pointed the finger at Alexander Bradley, a close friend of Hernandez, who was with him the night of the shootings. Hernandez was also acquitted Friday of shooting Bradley in the face months later to try to silence him as a witness. Hernandez, 27, catch that number 27. That's another another number. He was a part of the 27 club that goes into his ritual, but we're going to talk about that more when I show y'all these other clips. It says he was already serving a life sentence for the 2013 killing of Odin Lloyd, a semi-professional football player who was dating the sister of Hernandez's fiance. Bradley, who was, who was with Hernandez that night of the double murder, became enraged after a brew bumped into him while dancing spilling his drink he said hernandez later opened fire on the men's car as they waited at a stoplight bradley also said hernandez shot him in the face months later after he made a remark about the earlier shootings bradley lost his right eye in the shooting hernandez lawyer said it was bradley an admitted drug dealer who shot the men over a drug deal now mind you bradley sold drugs and he also sold guns and it was also rumored that hernandez participated in that as well that he used to traffic guns and use you know, his status to get some of it done. Although he signed his $40 million deal a little bit after this murder happened. The defense hammered at Bradley's credibility, citing his immunity deal with prosecutors to testify against Hernandez, his role as the driver of the car the night of the shootings and his criminal record. Bradley is currently serving a five-year prison term in Connecticut for firing shots at that nightclub. This article was written in 2017. So buddy, only got five years to guy Bradley for his role in the shooting that night, right? Bradley, the case is kind of crazy because then it goes to, it, it goes, it makes you think about this. Hernandez got acquitted of double murder. He also got acquitted of shooting the dude, basically trying to kill him because he was a witness. Who shot the guy Bradley in the face? Because he got shot, his eye is gone. Now, it, it's almost, this is not a part of this article. We're not going to read over this entire article because basically summed up, no one is actually, you know, there, there's no one person who shot the guy Bradley in the eye. He admitted that he doesn't know who actually shot him in a text message. That's basically what got Hernandez acquitted of the double murder and trying to shoot him in the face to silence him. Bradley sent a text message to his lawyer saying that, you know, he didn't know who actually shot him. And, you know, the entire reason that he was testifying and, you know, against Hernandez was that he didn't want him to get criminally charged. But it was just all a bunch of just really confusing stuff, because my questions was who actually I don't think they actually proved who shot the two guys. It's, it's literally left up to what you want to believe. They just did not have any concrete evidence to charge Aaron Hernandez, nor the Bradley guy. So Hernandez was acquitted and they both were basically charged for just gun possession and firing off a gun. No evidence was concrete enough to prove Hernandez shot him in the face to keep him from testifying. There was also no evidence that Hernandez actually killed those two guys in the car. The only evidence that there was was there was four people in the car that supposedly Hernandez shot into. The two that survived, they said they saw Hernandez do it. But the judge in the case, he didn't allow that to be used because of, I guess, it being prejudice. This case is very confusing. You know, nobody... From what I read and understood, nobody was actually charged in the killing of those two men. So like I said, it's left up for you to believe if, you know, Hernandez was like a serial killer, if he really did kill those two, or was it a drug deal gone bad like, you know, 
Hernandez attorneys tried to pin it on the guy Bradley. Bradley was a close friend of Hernandez. You got to remember that. So whatever they had going on, they both were in it together. Hell, you know, I, I don't know. I guess you could go back and be like, yo, so if they shot him, what bullets, you know, came from what gun? They should be able to prove it by the gun that was used. I have no idea. It's really kind of confusing, and I don't think I'm missing anything. I literally read multiple articles, and it's hard to pinpoint who did what. But a lot of people think that Hernandez was the actual killer because of the two guys that said they saw him who survived the shooting. That you kind of can't get around, and I'm not really sure why the judge threw it out under it being prejudice. So this is just me having to go into the murders a little bit just so we could kind of get an idea of who Aaron Hernandez was and did he actually commit those murders? What is actually going on here and how does it tie into his death? I'm going to leave this section right here. We'll continue on with how he died and then we're going to get into some really interesting clips and we're going to come back and we have a couple more things to tie into the ritual sacrifice of Aaron Hernandez. This is definitely a confusing one in my eyes. And we know the devil is in the details. So it says a report released by the state police on Thursday says John 316 was written on Hernandez's forehead and on the cell wall, including in their final report. There's a Bible passage that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life just about everyone knows that um that passage is probably one of the most popular from the bible so it says the report from a state police detective assigned to worcester county say that they found hernandez around 3 a.m that's something to take note of we know that 3 a.m. is right in between the witching hours and when a lot of ritual sacrifices take place. So it says correction officers found that cardboard had been shoved into the tracks of Hernandez's cell door to prevent the door from opening. Hernandez also put shampoo on the floor to make it slippery, the report states. Once the correction officers got inside the cell, they found Hernandez hanging from a bed sheet tied around the window's bars. The officers and medical staff performed CPR, but Hernandez never gained consciousness. Then he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. So it says state police said Hernandez's right middle finger had a fresh cut and there was blood on adjacent fingers. Besides the John 316 written on his forehead, there also appeared to be a large circular blood mark on each of his feet. On the wall of the cell were several drawings and John 316 written in what appeared to be blood. And those drawings were, like I said, supposedly he, you know, supposedly he, um, he wrote Illuminati, all C and I, the triangle, the pyramid, all that good stuff was supposedly on the wall as well, right? The handwritten notes, it were three handwritten notes found next to the Bible. A description of the notes was redacted from the state police report, but supposedly one of them was like, you know, to his family or that he's, he's going in another realm, another realm in time or something like that. It's odd, y'all. There's, there's like a lot of numerology around his death. It, everything, like I said, points to a ritual nothing points to it being what they tell us because um what was that pimp c i think when they found him he was next to a bible he was in praying position they say they say capital steez jumped off with a bible they say um what's his name um mac miller was in praying position now they say when they found Aaron Hernandez, he had three notes. He was found at 3 a.m. They said three notes were found next to the Bible that laid right beside where he hung himself. So for the ones that can see, you know, for the people that are aware, it's very clear what happened to Aaron Hernandez. Correction officers told police that Hernandez had been locked in his cell just before 8 p.m. on April 18th. One officer said he last saw Hernandez around 1 a.m. on April 19th. About two hours later, the officer saw a sheet hanging in front of the door to Hernandez's cell. The officer said he asked Hernandez to remove the sheet or sound off. As the officer poked at the sheet, it fell 
and he saw Hernandez hanging from the window. After that, they tried to open the door. They tried to lift Hernandez to relieve pressure off his neck. Then they began performing chest compressions. State police said a review of the video surveillance shows Hernandez was on the phone just before being locked in his cell. Police said they listened to the last phone calls, the last five phone calls that Hernandez made. Hernandez does not make any apparent indication of an intent to harm himself. One inmate said Hernandez requested his laundry be ready for the weekend because he was expecting a visit from his fiance and his daughter. Now, think about that. That right there is why I wanted to revamp this video, show y'all this clip for ones that haven't seen it because it goes right into what these guys are about to talk about on how there wasn't any indication that he was going to harm himself. And also another inmate told them that he was expecting a visit from his fiance and his daughter and no man in his right mind you know, or under his own will, will ever hang himself knowing that his daughter and his wife was about to come and see him in just a couple of days. So with that being said, check this out. That's what I want to just kind of, you know, just really ask you, because I know how I felt, because I talked to him the day before everything went down. What do you mean? What, 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 what went down? Like, I, I mean, because we obviously, like when be, before he went to jail, before he went to jail, no, 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 or... not, no, not, bef not the day before he allegedly committed suicide. Oh. I, we oh. we just had a conversation before he, before what? Hold on, when before he allegedly before he allegedly committed suicide, we just talked. He was in great wow. spirits, like like we chopping it up. He was yeah, big dog. You know, I, I'm here, man. You know, I, my family, this and that. Everything is good, 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 good. So when they say he committed suicide, I'm sitting here like, I just talked to him last night. Right. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even mentally built like that. He wired but different. The, you know the, it the wasn't suicide. Is, so we all got we all got different different Chico stories. A hundred percent. Like I I was with Chico, like we was in the same recruiting class. So I seen the younger him. And and one thing that I'll say about him, how he's being portrayed as this villain, that's not him. That's, that's, that's not him. We, we talked about it. I mean, him. like, don't get me wrong. What, what, in all respects of what happened, th the person that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just, just from your experience. And everybody who, everybody from Florida at that particular point in time called him Chico. They, it wasn't even calling him Aaron. Like, no, bro, Chico. You talking about Chico? Yes. Chico. Chico from Connecticut. Like, yeah. Like, he was a loyal, funny, goofy dude, bro. Like, so much so that he spent Thanksgiving with me and my family. Like that, so what, so don't get like the bashing of who he is and what he was done, that's that's understandable. We, 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 we live in the day and time that that's what it is. And that's the part that I dislike is because he's not here to defend himself. Yeah. So everything that, that's come up, I dismiss it because that's not the Chico or the Aaron that I had grown to know from the night coming to the crib, the playing the game, you know, following up on the guys to being a but, teammate, but, but, but to being a teammate with him in New England. Mm -hmm. You know, my my first year, 09, 2010, when he came in, Grunt came in, Jules came in, like all these guys was, you know, right under my arms and it was still the same, like all of us, just brothers in the locker room, none of that other funny, crazy yeah, that yeah. they're trying to say or portray. But bro, 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 like I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Like, I don't know your experience because you said, Cause you start diving into it, like you know him. Yeah, I remember I was there the whole year with them. So what was your experience like before I before I get my thoughts? Cool as hell, cool dude. Went out with him a couple times, not out out, but you know to eat, chat. Mm -hmm. I had to pay for that jersey number, oh, stuff like that. Yeah, hey, yeah, he, yeah. How much yeah. you gave him? Man, touching those, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much you gave? Him? <laughs> yeah, no, but but he, he, so, he was so cool. here's what I'm saying. So everybody that's. I mean, the sentiment is, is universal, everybody who played with him. But y'all gotta understand, like, people who have, wasn't around Chico, Aaron, like, it, it y'all gotta explain that. You know what I mean? Because, like, because the Pouncey brothers, loyal, ro like, riding with them. You, 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 even y'all right now. So I, I get that, but then there's a, you know, it seems to be an, another side to him. Like, it seemed to be another side to him. And, and do y'all, 
Can y'all understand that? I under, listen, do you have to respect what took place? There was a body or in essence bodies that were damaged, right? In some way, shape, form, or fashion. I respect that. Right. And I'm not denying what was done was bad. Now, the person from my vantage point who they claim did it, nah. You just can't see it. Nah. But, but in that, but I knew him in a different time. Yeah. I knew the 17, 18, 19 right. year old Chico, you know, and obviously he knows a different time and a different time. But yet through it all, like, you know, when, when, when you're painted as a villain, like the Joker ain't never don't, don't nobody tell no good stories of the Joker. Like, oh, he, or don't show his, his his kid pictures or nothing like that. Right. Without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, through it all, man, I knew a beautiful soul, fun loving. You know, he was he was only thing he wanted to do was just make it to the league. Like as everybody else. A nigga that's above a nigga that's above the Illuminati. A nigga that's above the Illuminati. I'm above all of that shit. That's why Dana White scared of me. <laughs> That's why Dana White scared of me and Lorenzo scared of me. He owned, he owned the UFC. And Mr. Kraft scared of me. Think about this. Every time I lead a team, every time I leave a team, the owner walks the whole field and shake my hand. Look it up. When I got traded from, from when I got traded from the Cardinals, when I got traded from the Patriots to the Cardinals, Robert Kraft walked the whole field and shook my hand, got a picture. When I got let go from the when I got let go from the from the Cardinals to the, and I went to the Raiders. Michael Bidwell walked the whole field. Michael Bidwell walked the whole field and came to the end of the, to where I was at warming up and shook my hand. Almost like, almost like the president. Almost like they said, oh, let me pass this off to the president. <laughs> They're trying to pass a torch off to the President Obama. President Obama and uh Imagine, imagine if President Obama somehow could body jump. Imagine if President Obama could somehow body jump and jump into my body. Or Aaron Hernandez. Oh, y'all don't know what Josh McDaniels really did to Aaron Hernandez? Wait, they don't know what happened with Aaron Hernandez and Josh McDaniels. All right, y'all talk to me right now. Because I'll go on, I'll go on a podcast about that. If y'all don't know what happened, what really happened with Aaron Hernandez, y'all thought Aaron Hernandez killed himself in jail. Y'all thought Chico killed himself in jail? Y'all thought my nigga Chico killed himself in jail? Oh. Oh. All right, y'all. So now we get to the point where no one around Chico, Aaron Hernandez, actually thought that he committed suicide. Now you get the inmate that said he was preparing to see his fiance and his child the weekend that he died. He died on a Wednesday. You also get other NFL players who were very close to him that also said it's no way he committed suicide. That... I thought was huge because it's coming right out of people, you know, it's coming right from people that were directly involved in his life. Cam Newton was somebody that played with him in college and knew him at a very young age. Fred Taylor was a guy that even said he spoke to him the day before he committed suicide, supposedly. Now, we already have it, you know, it's known. Nobody thought he died the way that they said. So then we get to the question of why was Aaron Hernandez sacrificed? Who sacrificed him? How did they pull it off inside of a jail cell? Now, I think we have a couple of different famous people that died inside of jails. And it was no way we believe that they actually hung themselves. So I have my opinion and I think it's pretty close to why he was sacrificed. Now, also that clip from Chandler Jones that everybody think is going crazy and has lost his mind and he has CTE, you know, he's a schizo. All the stuff that people are saying about him, 
nobody's really thinking about the fact that this guy is closer to, you know, he 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 was he was once behind the curtain. You know, now he I guess he said a few wild things on Twitter that has people like not really believing him because I think he's still trying to be in the NFL while at the same time kind of exposing it. But he also said that they put him in a hospital against his will. And we all know that kind of stuff to be true, man, because they do it to Kanye. They do it to a lot of other celebs as well. And they've been doing it for a very long time. They control the media. It's pretty easy for them to make you seem crazy to the average person. The average person is going to dismiss you as crazy before they believe the shit that this person is saying because it sounds so out there. That's the oldest trick in the book for them is making someone look crazy. It's the easiest way for the public to dismiss a person. And that's what they love to do. Because Chandler Jones was, you know, he brought up something nobody's ever really heard, you know, started talking about Josh McDaniels, so on and so on. Right. So I thought that clip was interesting to add into the video as well. But I'll just go ahead and get to my why. And pretty much wrap this video up. Now, I'm going to say. Aaron Hernandez became expendable for the New England Patriots. He was already in jail for the rest of his life. Now, the reason I think that this was a sacrifice for the New England Patriots is because New England won the Super Bowl, if I'm not mistaken, it was in 2015, two years after Aaron Hernandez was arrested for murder. They also won the Super Bowl again two years later in 2017, which would have been right at about two months, two to three months before Aaron Hernandez was sacrificed when the Falcons had a 99% chance to win that game. And basically we all know the Falcons threw that game because it was a deeper plot than anybody knew, you know, of what was going on. It was a way deeper plot. Mike Shanahan and the Falcons head coach, owner, they threw that game. I think Aaron Hernandez was sacrificed for one of these. You know, it, it was a reason behind that game as well because the Patriots won a championship, I think, every two years from 2015 to 2019, if I'm not mistaken. We can check it to be sure. That's about three Super Bowls in the span of four to five years. It just... To me, it's not coincidental. There's no coincidences. And they made that, you know, 28 to 3 comeback. And then two and a half, three months later, Aaron Hernandez is killed at the age of 27 years old, right after New England won another Super Bowl. Now, obviously, by this point, he, he had been out of the league for four years. But it made me think that he just became expendable. He was already in jail for life. So they could easily give him up. Because it's clear as day that this was a sacrifice. It's clear as day that it was a ritual sacrifice. All that's really elusive is why they sacrificed him. Was it for the Patriots? Was it for the Super Bowl? You know, who was really behind Aaron Hernandez's death and why and how did they do it inside of a jail cell? Did they put a spell on him? Did he actually hang himself and he just wasn't in his right mind? I don't know, because then you can't even say that because Fred Taylor said he talked to him the day before he committed suicide. So how did they get inside of a jail cell and hang this man? How did it happen? I think that will forever be a question is how and why. What was really going on with Aaron Hernandez to the point where he was sacrificed? And I just believe it was for the Patriots. You know, Robert Kraft, 2015, they had that deflate gate going on where they got caught cheating, deflating balls. They also won the Super Bowl that same year then won the Super Bowl right before Aaron Hernandez was killed. So to me, all fingers are pointing at the Patriots organization and Robert Kraft sacrificing Aaron Hernandez for the success of the Patriots. It's just they gave up blood. They gave up 
you know, they gave up another soul. And to me, to me, that's my opinion. You know, I, I believe it gets it goes back to the NFL and how wicked the entire, you know, sports entertainment associations are. You know, I think it's the NFL was behind the sacrifice of Aaron Hernandez. And it's pretty much as simple as that. It's wicked. It's wicked, bro. The NFL is wicked as hell, just like any other entertainment industry. And all they do is sell dreams. There's only like less than 1% of people that will ever make it to the NFL. So it's very much controlled. And they keep it going by selling dreams. Every young child, you know, who loves sports and football, all they do is dream about making it to the NFL. I was once a part of that. And that's how they keep the cycle of people coming in and out of the league. So to me, once again, it all goes back to the NFL and it goes back to the New England Patriots. There's a price to pay for everything. So with that being said, y'all, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. Hope y'all enjoy this video. Just thought we would actually do a real deep dive into Aaron Hernandez. Y'all let me know why y'all think he he got killed. How did they pull it off inside of a jail cell? Did they get someone in the jail to do it? Did they get a, you know, an officer to do it in the jail? How did they actually pull it off? Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. So with that being said, it's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.